A sage is one who fully understands the three existences of life past, present and future. The three rulers and the five emperors referred to in Confucianism, as well as three sages of ancient China, comprehended only the present, they knew neither the past nor the future. Brahmins, however, were able to see 80,000 eons into the past and the future, thus in a small way resembling sages. People of the two vehicles, as mentioned in the Hinayana teachings, were aware of the law of cause and effect working throughout the past, present and future. Hence they were superior to the Brahmins. The Hinayana Bodhisattvas could see three Asogi eons into the past, whereas the Bodhisattvas of the lowest Mahayana teachings, Sugyo, spent as many eons practicing Buddhism as there are dust particles in a world, and the Bodhisattvas of the intermediate Mahayana teachings, Bekyo, spent myriad kodas of eons to attain each of the 52 stages leading to enlightenment. In the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra, Shakyamuni Buddha described the period of Sanzen Jintengo, a time incomparably more distant than any that had been mentioned before. In the essential teaching of the Sutra, Shakyamuni revealed the unimaginably remote past called Gohyaku Jintengo, as well as matters pertaining to uncountable eons in the future. From the above it is clear that a thorough understanding of both the past and the future is intrinsic to the nature of a sage. Shakyamuni Buddha accurately predicted the near future, saying that he would enter nirvana in three months' time. Can there then be any doubt about his prediction for the distant future, that Kosen Rufu will be achieved in the last of the 500-year periods after his passing? With such perception one can see the distant future by looking at what is close at hand. One can infer what will be from what exists in the present. This is the consistency from beginning to end, mentioned in the Lotus Sutra. Who should be acknowledged as the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the last 500-year period? I did not trust my own wisdom, but because the rebellions and invasion that I had predicted have occurred, I can now trust it. These incidents happened solely to prove me correct. My disciples should know that I, Nichiren, am the votary of the Lotus Sutra. Since I follow the same practice as Bodhisattva Fukio, those who despise and slander me will have their heads broken into seven pieces, whereas those who believe in me will amass good fortune as high as Mount Sumeru. Question. Why is it that those who slander you have not yet had their heads broken into seven pieces? Answer. Since ancient times, of all those who slandered saints and sages other than the Buddha, only one or two have suffered punishment by having their heads broken. The crime of abusing Nichiren is not by any means limited to only one or two persons. The entire Japanese nation has been punished simultaneously. What else do you think caused the great earthquake of the Shoka era and the huge comet of the Bunei era? I am the foremost sage in the entire world. Nevertheless, all people, from the ruler on down to the common people, backquote have despised and slandered me, attacked me with sword and staff, and even exiled me. That is why Bonten, Teishaku, the gods of the sun and the moon, and the four heavenly kings incited a neighboring country to punish our land. This was clearly prophesied in the Daijuku and Nino Sutras, the Nirvana Sutra and the Lotus Sutra. No matter what prayers may be offered, if the people fail to heed me, this country will suffer calamities such as those that occurred on Iki and Tsushima. My disciples, you should believe what I say and watch what happens. These things do not occur because I myself am respect worthy, but because the power of the Lotus Sutra is supreme. If I declare myself before the people, they will think that I am boastful, but if I humble myself before them, they will despise the Sutra. The taller the pine tree, the longer the wisteria vine hanging from it. The deeper the source, the longer the stream. How fortunate, how joyful. In this impure land, I alone enjoy true happiness. Background. In this Gosho, Nichiren Daishonin defines a sage as one who fully understands the past, present and future. Perception into the three existences of life is a distinctive characteristic of the Buddha. The term, sage, as used in this writing, thus indicates, Buddha. A Buddha's prophecy is not based on intuition, occult power or clairvoyance, but on the strict law of causality which governs life throughout eternity. It is because of his understanding of causality that a Buddha can look at the present and know both the past and future. 
Nichiren Daishonin first remonstrated with the government in 1200 by submitting the Risho Ankoku Ran on securing the peace of the land through the propagation of true Buddhism. In this treatise he issued a warning to the ruler that the country would be plagued by rebellion at home and foreign invasion unless it ceased its support of erroneous religions. In 1272 a rebellion took place, throwing the nation into confusion. The Hojo clan was rocked by internal intrigue. Hojo Tokazuki, an elder half-brother of the regent Hojo Tokamune, conspired to seize power, but his plot was discovered. Two of his accomplices were put to death on February 11, and three days later, Hojo Tokazuki was beheaded. The rebellion had been stopped before it had a chance to get started, but even the prospect of rebellion caused dire fears throughout the country. Then in October 1274, Mongol forces swept across the islands of Tsushima and Iki located between the western part of Japan and the Korean peninsula, and attacked Kyushu, the southernmost part of Japan. In 1281, they attacked Kyushu for the second time. This foreign invasion contributed heavily to the social disruption. Nichiren Daishonin wrote this short but significant letter in 1275. He had already remonstrated with the Sogonate government three times, but to no avail. In 1274 he had been pardoned from exile on Sado Island and returned to Kamakura. Just as he predicted, however, the country itself was plagued internally by rebellion and externally by the formidable Mongol hordes. Toki Janin, Toki Guro Tenetsugu, the recipient of this letter, was an official serving the Kamakura Sogonate on the military tribunal and one of the Daishonin's staunch followers. He lived in Shimosa, to the northeast of Kamakura. He became a priest but lived at home. Such priests were called Nayudo. Toki took the priest's name, Janin, and was later given another name, Nichijo, by the Daishonin. He received dozens of writings, many of which involve significant revelations, including, the true object of worship. Accurate data is scarce and posthumous biographies are contradictory, though it would appear from the few accurate sources now available that he was born in 1216 and died in 1299. He is believed to have converted to the Daishonin's teachings around 1253. Defining a sage as one who knows past, present and future, Nichiren Daishonin compares the stature of wise men and Buddhas appearing in both non-Buddhist books and Buddhist sutras and arrives at the conclusion that the Buddha revealed in the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra as the foremost sage. In the latter day of the law, Nichiren Daishonin declared himself to be the foremost sage in the entire world on the basis of his own accurate prediction. Gauging himself against the standards in the sutras, he drew this conclusion. He concluded that enmity toward him caused the protective gods to enjoin a neighboring country to attack Japan and that the workings of these gods should be attributed to the supreme power of the mystic law.